There are stories that capture our imaginations and or in the fields of innovation and exploration. But there are also inspiring tales that serve as a reminder of the value of caution and safety alongside the triumphs. I like insulation, that. <laughs> insulation is, is something that, um, I'll be frank, is something that is not even considered <laughs> in the, in the time, on, the, um, on the vessel, uh, on the submersible. Why? One such tale is that of the Titan, a submarine that defied expectations before collapsing catastrophically and killing everyone on board. Let's explore the Titan's tragic voyage, illuminating the lofty goal that inspired its construction and the tragic results of ignoring safety. Introducing the Titan's unusual design, the Titan was designed in a daring departure from conventional submarine design and was the idea of Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush. The vessel promised and matched performance and durability because it was built with titanium and carbon fiber, materials known for their strength and light weight. Due to their brittleness, these materials did, however, also carry inherent risks, which would play a crucial role in the submarine's tragic end. Investigators are hard at work piecing together what caused the Ocean Gate Titan submersible to implode in the Atlantic Ocean more than a month ago now that they have possession of the submersible's debris. Arun Bansal, University Distinguished Professor of Physics at Northeastern, was interviewed in an effort to learn more about what may have actually occurred all those fathoms below the surface, where the five Titan crew members perished. The vessel's experimental carbon fiber hull, which the company produced in just six weeks, has received a lot of attention as a possible explanation. Carbon fiber-based composites have been successfully developed for use in the aerospace, automotive, sporting goods, medical, and consumer industries for components needing to be light and strong. However, this is not the case for deep-sea applications, where pressure hulls are frequently made of steel, titanium, and aluminum. The first deep-sea vehicle with a hull primarily made of carbon fibers was Titan. Designing safe carbon fiber hulls is challenging because it is unclear how well carbon fibers can withstand repeated cycles of stress, particularly compressive stress, under deep-sea pressures. When evaluating Titan's failure, it's also important to consider how water absorption damages the epoxy used to bind the carbon fibers in the composite. When did carbon fiber start to be considered a potential material for these kinds of vehicles? The use of carbon fibers for the hull of a one-person submersible to descend to Challenger Deep, the Mariana Trench's deepest point at about 36,000 feet, appears to have been investigated by adventurer Steve Fawcett around 2000. Neither testing nor deployment has taken place for the deep flight Challenger submersible that Fawcett ordered. The first deep-sea submersible with a carbon fiber hull was Titan. Why are businesses experimenting with these novel materials, and are there any promising alternatives? Transformative scientific and engineering developments are built on new materials. In comparison to metals, carbon fibers have many benefits, including high strength, light weight, and resistance to corrosion. Titan had made several dives to the Titanic shipwreck, so we should wait to make any conclusions about what caused its implosion in the first place until the investigations are finished. It is predicted that eventually, researchers will create carbon fiber-based materials for deep-sea applications in addition to testing procedures for the submersible's secure operation. Submersibles are not subject to international law in the same way that ocean-going ships are, which requires that they be flagged in one country and then be subject to inspection by both that country and the countries they enter. A third-party classification society, such as the American Bureau of Shipping, would typically be invited on board to inspect the vessel as part of the insurance process to ensure that all regulations were being followed. Because they don't sail in and out of ports, submersibles are unique. Most submersible rules are local rules because they must be carried. For instance, there are specific guidelines for using submersibles in American ports and in American waters. The problem with Ocean Gate and the Titan was that they were essentially operating outside of territorial waters because they were launching from a Canadian ship and were past the 12-mile limit. It didn't seem like this vessel was subject to any sort of jurisdiction. Although they are not breaking the law, they are doing so in a very hazy area. Why isn't Titan classed? 
is the straightforward title of a 2019 post on the OceanGate website. The underwater exploration company claimed that because of its superior commitment to safety, it had declined to have its vessel tested by a third-party certification agency. These evaluations are done annually and do not ensure that the operator follows procedures or processes that are key to conducting safe dive operations, the company claims. But is it really true? According to Bruce Morton, he was hired to be a designer for a submersible, for the electrical design for a submersible that will be going to the Titanic, and when he first got contacted by a recruiter he asked him, so are you interested in working on submarines? And he answered, no I'm not interested working on military stuff, and the client clarifying it was a private project. If you want to take people on tours, you can use a Coast Guard approved boat and take people out on a ride, but you have to pay and work and you operate within regulations. OceanGate carried out their subs features in a completely different manner than normal. The thing is that the company was small and nobody else has ever done or nobody is currently doing anything that they do, so they operate completely outside of any regulations. They were trying to work with the Coast Guard to get certified, but the Coast Guards would have to make a whole new set of rules for them, and they can't just wait for them to make rules for the submersible, so they just operate and carry on with our business as usual. A group representing the ocean technology sector called the Marine Technology Society wrote to OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush in 2018, expressing unanimous concern over the vessel's lack of certification. The signatories stated, it is our unanimous view that this validation process by a third party is a critical component in the safeguards that protect all submersible occupants. While this may demand additional time and expense, the Titan's innovative design and ambitious capabilities propelled its tragic voyage despite the warnings and worries expressed by experts. The imperative need to prioritize safety was overshadowed by the desire to push boundaries and conquer new terrain. The hopes and dreams of everyone on board were carried aboard the Titan as it set sail on its fateful journey, despite being warned against doing so. The tragic reminder of what happens when ambition triumphs over caution is provided by the story of the Titan. It is crucial to continue to prioritize safety and pay attention to professional advice while pursuing innovation and pushing boundaries. The tragedy serves as a stark reminder of the value of thorough risk analyses, meticulous engineering, and strict safety measures in any ambitious undertaking. We are reminded of the delicate balance between ambition and safety by the tail of the Titan, a submarine that dared to defy the rules. It serves as a sobering lesson, reminding aspiring pioneers and inventors of how crucial it is to uphold a steadfast commitment to ensuring the welfare of all parties. The Titan's legacy serves as a reminder that real progress is made through thoughtful decision-making and unwavering commitment to the protection of human life, not just through innovation. Did this catch your interest? Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.